Hello everyone, it is the Prophet Michael David, aka Aries, and uh, today we're going to go over that moron. But first, probably because some of my recent videos, uh, if I have any Jewish um, watchers, um, some people might accuse me of being anti-Semitic, and I've said before I can't be anti-Semitic because I'm Mashiach. But number two, I said I can't be anti-Semitic because I know the ridiculous uh, root meaning of the word and I told you I'll explain it so here it goes. Most people think anti-Semitic means racist or biased against Jewish people, illogically so and everything, but that's not what it means at all. What it really means and why I called it in my last video anti-Semitic is that's really what it is. And here's the story. In the Torah, the Bible, um, Genesis, uh, right after the Great Flood, where God destroys humanity and evil humanity and the Nephilim, he leaves um, Noah. Noah wasn't a great guy. He was just like the best guy on a very bad planet. And Noah's three sons and their wives, I guess. And God commanded Noah to build the ark, which he did eventually. He had like 120 years. But Noah had three sons. And his youngest son was named Yapet, spelled Japheth, but we've talked about this before, how the Y sound in Hebrew uh, changes to J or G um, when it gets Greek-sized or Anglicized and or Anglicized. Um, Noah's middle child was named Ham, and Noah's eldest son was named Shen, Shem, sometimes referred to as Sen. So, in conclusion, I'm going to elaborate a little bit. Uh, the only thing that anti-Semitism really means is people who are illogically biased against Noah's eldest son, Shem, or, and or his descendants. And I would ask you, do I look like the type of person that really gives a shit about some family Noah drama, family drama from according to the Bible, like 5,000 years ago, according to geology, the young Andreas, like 15,000 years ago, why would I be biased uh, against one of Noah's sons over the other two? I wouldn't be. It's illogical. Now, if humanity would be biased for some reason against one of Noah's sons, it wouldn't be against Shem. It would be against Ham. And that's because, and it's a story, it might be, on, I don't know if it's in, Genesis or if it's a, an add-on like a, I don't know where it is but anyway there's this story about how Noah one of his great faults was he was an alcoholic he was a drunk and uh, there was this one time that he got drunk and he got naked and he started masturbating in his tent and his uh, middle son Ham saw him do it and just watched him finish and then pass out and then like thought it was funny. And so he went and told his older and younger brother, Shem and Yapet, what he did. And they just looked at him like, dude, what's wrong with you? And so uh, Shem and Yapet went into the tent and they covered up their naked father. And then when Noah woke up, Shem and Yapet told Noah what Ham did and Noah cursed Ham and his descendants. So, if there would be any son of Noah that humanity should be biased against or his descendants, it would be Ham, not Shem. There should be anti-Hamites, not anti-Shemites. All right, now we're going to move on to Netanyahu. All right, that is the thumbnail of this video, but if you watch the short, that's before uh, the truce was broken. That's what that guy looks like after seven days of peace. Does that look like the good guy in this situation? No, it doesn't. Okay, and just a real quick note. If I call Netanyahu or anybody else an antichrist, again, we're doing this by basic terms, not in like the magical way you guys think this. We've had this discussion before. Listen, Christ means Christos, which means Messiah in Hebrew, and Mashiach a little bit different, but they all just mean anointed one of God, a messenger of God. Uh, a prophet. So calling somebody an antichrist is just basically calling them the opposite of a prophet of God. All right, for what, from what I read or saw, um, 
on YouTube, the truce was broken because there were some uh, vigilante Palestinians in the West Bank that stabbed one officer and got killed, and uh, there was a couple that uh, murdered three Israelis at a bus stop, and then they were also killed, and that gave Netanyahu the context to say the truce was broken and relaunched the war, except you know, he called them Hamas because he calls all Palestinians Hamas, which brings me to the point about Netanyahu. He is a true antichrist. And as I've said before, and I will continue to elaborate on this video, as soon as the war is over, he goes to jail, except he doesn't want to go to jail. And so he will stretch out this war as long as he can. He will murder all five million Palestinians before and then after that he'll start with Jordan or Syria or who knows even Egypt then we found out recently that um, the Israeli attack force the Israeli geno genocide force had known about these plans for a year and even Egypt had warned them a month before that you know, Hamas had something big planned and everything, but Netanyahu ignored it because he was trying not to go to jail because of the corruption thing and the judge thing. And honestly, that's how the sociopaths and Antichrist think. He was probably hoping that they would institute something like that, but he had no idea they would be so coordinated or so deadly. He was probably hoping that, you know, a few dozen uh, to maybe a hundred Israelis would be killed and that way it would be the biggest terrorist attack in a very long time. Uh, and then that would give him the context to do exactly what he's doing now. He would have done the same thing. So now he's in this position, and he's just going to carpet bomb the ever-flowing shit out of Gaza. And he's going to ch channel his innermost Henry Kissinger and just kill as many as he can. Because, again... As long as the bombs keep dropping, then Israel, the land you call Israel, can't really get rid of him, at least not easily. But again, as soon as peace breaks out, he's gone, and then he also goes to jail. So he doesn't want that to happen, so he'll just, he'll kill all five million if he needs to, and then he'll kill more, he'll find people to kill after that. Which brings me to my final comments on him um, with this article that I just posted about how uh, he's not going to survive this. Except that's true, um, but just not in the way they think. The way they presented it, he's not going to survive this politically, but he's not going to survive this at all. And, but he's not going to get murdered. Um, he's going to go out in true Hitler style um, and once it gets thrown out and the police come to get him, Interpol, to not send him to Israeli court, but to, you know, the Hague, um, he's going to shoot himself in the head and kill himself. Again, this is not a prophecy. This is prophetic speculation. I only have three prophecies, but this is the only way it's going to... He doesn't want to spend the rest of his life in the Hague. Um, so he knows that he's not long for this earth. And so... He's going to take out as many Palestinians as he can while the world tolerates it. All right, and now before I sign off, uh, we're going to do some actual real prophecy. And this is for all or any of my Jewish watchers or anybody else who's interested. But what are going to be the, the biblical consequences of these actions? And well... Let me just say this. Recently, I have been reading uh, Numbers, and Numbers is awesome. It's terrifying, but it's awesome. Until I started reading the Torah, I had no idea how many times that you all were almost destroyed by God, had not Moshe vouched for you. It's not even just after the golden calf. In Numbers, there's plenty of times where uh, God, Hashem, told Moshe, move aside and let me just destroy these people and be done with it. And Moshe vouched for you guys every single time, even after you were planning to stone him and Aaron to death and go back to Egypt, even after that. So 
let's just say you're not you're not going to get destroyed but how this is going to end is not going to be good let me elaborate in the future there will be a moment where in an instant i will give you everything that you think that you wanted for all these millennia everything that you were promised from the torah fulfilling all those prophecies I also fulfill all the christian prophecies and the islamic ones as well they're all abrahamic faiths but then in the next instant you're going to realize what that means and you're just going to drop to your knees and burst into tears i am not going to elaborate because this is not that moment but let me just say this and i've said this before in some of one of my previous videos maybe another one that there's a lot of things you don't understand about Judaism and even less things you understand about Hebrewism. And one quote that I kept saying over and over, and this is the one you should really concentrate on is you do not know why you wail in front of that wall. You don't, you do it because it's habit, but you do not really understand why you wail in front of that wall. But I promise you, in the future, you will. All right, signing off. Rule number one, as always, do not touch other people without their consent, a.k.a. do not hurt each other. And rule number two, it's all about honesty. Lies are ticked down, a.k.a. try not to lie. I'll talk to you all later.